My daughter Kuri has DRPLA, a disease that causes atrophy of the brain. It is hereditary and progressive. There is no cure. Kuri is bedridden. My husband Chiaki passed away five years ago from this disease. I wrote Ohana family 11 years ago in hopes of finding a cure. I pray that I can save my daughter. Chapter 1 Chiaki's Change I wonder when Chiaki began to change. He had always been a person who was easily anchored. But he was a very kind person and I loved Chiaki. I don't know what I like about him, but I thought to myself, I want to be with this person forever. We had many fights, but I think we got along very well. For 10 years after we got married, we were blessed with a child. I was thinking that my life would change if we had a child because we would go abroad for work. So I wanted to have children later, if at all possible. I thought that even if we had a child, Chiaki and I would still be close. But after coming to Hawaii, we both gradually changed. I think Chiaki really did not want to come to Hawaii. He did not want to quit his job either. He was a loving parent, so he probably did not want to leave his sick mother and father behind and come to a foreign country. At first, he went to an English school, but his English did not improve at all. Kuri's moods were getting worse and worse and she and Chiaki were not getting along. Life in Hawaii was also difficult. When we first arrived, we couldn't work because of our visa, so we had to leave off our saving. Even after I started working, my salary was low for the high cost of living in Hawaii. Our family's income was also drastically reduced to a fraction of what it was in Japan. On top of that, tens of thousands of dollars quickly flew away to pay for visas and permanent residency. It was a dream come true that we were able to obtain a special visa and permanent residency with first priority. Many people who obtain a permanent residence visa from a work visa take years to get it. We are grateful that it took us less than a year to obtain a permanent residence visa, but the legal fees were also extraordinary. Also, after Kuri became epileptic, the cost of her medical care went up. When the insurance would no longer cover it, she developed epilepsy and had to call an ambulance to take her to the emergency room. Once the epilepsy was over, there was nothing to do after that. Kuri hated ambulances because of the long wait and test. The bill at the time was $600 for the ambulance. The bill for the use of the emergency room was $2,300. The total was $2,900. It all went away in one night. Later, when Kuri had an epileptic fit at the YMCA and an ambulance was called, I asked the paramedics to leave. The paramedics seemed to be well aware of the situation and did not look at me with displeasure, but rather gave me a sincere lesson on how to take care of Kuri and left. 
When our savings ran out, I began asking money from my parents. From my parents' side, they probably did not want me to depend on them when I was in my 40s. It was not that they did not want to lend me money, but that they were worried that our life plan was not good enough and that Chiaki was not doing well. I told my parents, we had made proper plans for our lives while we are in Japan too. It was just that Chris's illness was unexpected. I had borrowed money from my parents many times, but we had never borrowed a penny from Chiaki's parents. It was not that father-in-law did not want to lend us money. He was always concerned. Shall I get you some money? But Chiak said, My father is also taking care of my mother who collapsed, so I can't talk about that kind of money. On the contrary, he never said anything about Kuri's epilepsy or the interrupted delays that were beginning to appear. He kept quiet, saying, My father will just worry about it. I was not happy about that. I could understand Chiaki's concern for his parents. But why didn't he say anything when he was having trouble paying even the medical bills for Kuri? If that's the case, go find yourself any kind of job you can. You stay at home doing nothing, borrowing money from my parents and not even telling your own family about Kuri's illness. That is absolutely wrong. First of all, it would be more pitiful if father-in-law was not informed about what condition his grandchild is in. Father-in-law would be more than happy to lend us money for his granddaughter's illness. If the epilepsy continues, she won't even be able to go to the hospital. Please borrow money from your father for Kuri, I told Chiaki. He must have understood the gravity of the station. The day after Chiaki told his father about the money, father-in-law immediately wired it to us. Was Kuri that bad? He asked me over the phone. At the same time, he had a chance to talk to my father on the phone and was surprised to hear from my father that Chris's mental age is that of a kindergarten student. From my father's point of view, he was angry, wondering why Chiaki had not told him such an important thing. My father-in-law said, I'll take care of my money, so you should think about Chris's treatment first. I have my own wife to take care of, so I can't go to your place to help you. But if there is anything I can do, please let me know. He was a kind man. His voice brought tears to my eyes. But Chiaki was so concerned about his father's health after that. Chiaki didn't tell him about the difficulties of Kuri's illness and the money. And in the end, father-in-law passed away without knowing anything about it.